Here's a look at the CNC HP wing contact paper build. In this video I'm going to be using still images and give you a description of what is actually going on. First thing you'll need to do is take the tape off of the kit and separate all the parts. You'll notice that there are two parts that will not be used in this build. One of them is the piece of wood here which is part of the firewall and if you're using the motor that I recommend then you will not be using this piece. The other piece is the foam braces and I won't be using those. Uh, here you can see the Gorilla Glue, a 10 watt hot glue gun, as well as the packing tape. Also I should note that I'm using Blenderm. Uh, the Blenderm tape is used for hinges and I tape the top and the bottom of the control surface. Also you might note the uh, contact paper. It'll come in 18 to 20 inch widths and various colors. To start with, I cut two pieces 31 inches, and this is of the 18 inch wide contact paper. So with the 31 inch piece, I'm going to start the um, paper removing the back off of it using an X-Acto blade. And then I'm going to peel it, and this actually peels pretty easily once you get it started. You'll need to hold down the paper and peel the back off much like you see here. At this point I've gotten the paper peeled off and I've laid it down. Notice there's two hash marks uh, near the edge of my paper. I'm going to let you know that those marks are 5 inches and 19 and a quarter inches. And if you place the wing panel in between those two marks, it gives you enough area around the wing panel to cover the other surfaces that need to be covered. So you can see the layout here. Uh, also, with a sharp X-Acto blade, you can start removing the uh, parts by cutting around the foam. Also, I should note that on the ailerons, I cover the top side first, which is the longest side because of the bevel. And then also, whenever I cut, I cut right next to the bevel. And again, having a sharp X-Acto blade really helps. The other thing that I do whenever I cut these out is after I've got the pieces cut out I set those aside and then I work the panel um, with the wing from the center out uh, both toward the top and toward the bottom working from the center to get out the air bubbles once I have all the air bubbles out then I can turn the panel over and start trimming out the wing panel from the contact paper. And again, this is done very easily with a sharp X-Acto blade. One tip I can give you about the radius is do the straight sides and then once you've gotten the straight sides cut, then turn it over and cut from the top around the radius. Okay, now I've gotten all the parts covered on one side using one of the 31 inch length panels. I'm going to use the other 31 inch length panel. Notice the way I have this laid out. The way I've cut next to the wing panel and I'm going to take those pieces that I've gotten cut and those are I'm going to be using to cover the the ailerons on the beveled side. So you can see here I take the piece and lay it down over the bevel and then mash it flat. This keeps me from having to trim next to that bevel and it makes it easier to cover the bottom side of the ailerons. And here you can see I have both the left and the right covered and they're covered right up to the bevel. Now it's just a matter of trimming out all the parts. Once you get all the parts trimmed out, then we can move on to the next step. But again, here's the layout with the parts. One of the things that I want to do is lay out where my holes are for the battery compartment. Here you can see I'm just poking a screwdriver through the hole. That'll make it easier to find once the panel comes together and I'm ready to cut out that opening for the battery. And again, I'm just poking a screwdriver through, making sure that I penetrate the covering on the top side. Once I have that, then I want to go ahead and put on the tape that I'm going to be using instead of using those braces that I spoke of earlier. Notice here the way the tape is laid out. 
and also notice that I've trimmed out the tape around where the servos are going to go. Now I'm ready to start the fold. So what I do is I line up the edge on the inside, the leading edge, and fold the material over onto itself. Here it's very important to go ahead and make that fold and then mash the wing flat. If your edges don't match, it's not that big a deal, but it, it really would, would help if they did. Here you can see my wing, the, the panel folded over and it's mashed down flat. And again, if the edges aren't perfect, it's okay. It'll be fine. Now I notice that there's a little buildup on the leading edge there. What I'm going to do is take and sand that off. Once I've sanded it off, then whenever I put the wing panels together, they will fit a lot better. Now I'm ready to lay out my speed controller and receiver locations. And you can just see from the video about where you need to put them. Here I've just put the wing panels together just so that you can get oriented with where things need to go. Notice the speed controller, which is being cut out here. What I'm doing is actually penetrating the tape because the Velcro doesn't stick very well to that tape, but it'll stick really well to the foam. So I'm just removing the tape in the area where I'm going to be putting the Velcro for both the speed controller and the receiver. Now also notice in this image, you can see that there's three pieces of Velcro. The third piece down on the lower left is for the satellite receiver because I use a satellite receiver on my wings. Now I've, I've turned the wing over and I'm going to put a piece of tape down the center. Then I'm going to be trimming the tape on the top and the bottom, much like you see here with a sharp X-Acto blade, so that I'm able to fold it over and go ahead and glue. And here I'm trimming the top. and removing the excess piece of tape. So now I'm going to take and open that seam and I'm going to put a bead of hot glue down it and then I'm going to lay it flat and put my weight back on it and that's going to hold it in place while the glue sets. Now I'm ready to start gluing together the firewall. Here you can see that I'm going to be gluing the wood grain down toward the foam. So once I've coated it with glue then I'm going to press it in place and wait for it to cure. Now I need to go ahead and prep the spars. So what I'm doing here is I've pinched the top edge of each of these notches. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the Gorilla Glue on and here's a quick video that shows after I've run the beads of glue in between each pocket and of course uh, down the leading edge. So this will give you a good idea of how much glue and where it needs to go. Here you can see I'm just pressing the spar down into the glue. Now I'm going to fold the wing over onto itself and I'm going to need to use a stick in order to make sure that the notches in the spar line up into the notches in the wing. And again, the bottom is down right now. The top is coming over. And here you can see my little stick that I use to put the notches uh, of the spar inside the notches in the wing. Once I get them lined up, then I add some weight on top of the wing. And this actually keeps everything in place. Now, while everything is tied down or weighted down, I'm going to go ahead and glue the center section together. So I start by gluing the front section. And notice I'm going to glue from the, the point back past the two holes. And then once I glue that part, then I'm going to glue from the two holes in the back all the way to the trailing edge of the center section. Now I'm going to open it up, each wing half, and run a bead of glue down the trailing edge. Now this helps to really have a good hot glue gun. Notice the bead, and then as soon as I get the bead down, I'm going to weight the trailing edge back onto the glue. And that's going to need to be done pretty quickly because the glue will set. 
So now while I'm uh, after I've done the other side, now I'm going to go ahead and glue the top part of the firewall in place. Notice again the wood grain is going to be glued to the foam surface. So here I've put the glue on the wood and now I'm going to put it in place. Also I have a couple of pieces of metal which add weight to the area being glued. Um, once I get those in place, then while I'm waiting for that to set, I turn the wing around and start cutting out the battery hatch. So you can see here just with a sharp exacto blade I'm cutting from hole to hole and then I'll remove and discard the section that I cut out over the battery hatch. At this point I can remove my weight because by now the trailing edge has dried and I can actually pull my wing out of my build fixture. Now you don't need to have a build fixture unless you want one and if you want one I can give you information on how to build it but at any rate you can build on a flat table will work just fine. Now here's another tip for you after I've gotten it glued together I'm going to take in this area which uh, is on either side of the trailing edge on each side of the wing I'm going to build up some glue and then I'm going to mash it down to create a gusset and that's going to have a built up area of glue in four spots on the trailing edge and what this does is help ensure that the trailing edge stays glued together and here it is on the other side notice the buildup of glue after it's dried now I'm ready to glue on the uh, plate that goes over the uh, that creates the firewall now this plate goes on really will only go on one way and you can see that I run a generous bead on the top and on the bottom and then I put the plate in place again with the wood grain toward the foam now here's where I use that second piece this is the piece that, that, that the other piece the one that I discarded has no holes in it this one here has the four air vent holes Here's the braces that go inside the battery compartment. Notice I trim them slightly. About a sixteenth of an inch is fine. And then I test fit them. And once I'm happy with the fit, then I go ahead and use hot glue. And I run a generous bead of glue around all of the points of contact. And then I insert the piece. Once I put it in place, then I just mash the foam together and wait for the glue to cure. Once I've done the other side then the battery hatch area is done except for putting the piece of tape on. Notice the orientation of the tape. It actually goes from the front uh, of the battery box to the tip and what you do is lay it over and then turn it upside down and bend the tape over the leading edge and back onto the bottom and here I'm doing the other side I'm just pushing the tape down onto the bottom and then once I've done that then the front part is done next we need to add a piece of tape to the back and that piece of tape will go from the firewall and go up into the battery box you need to run the tape about an inch and a half forward of the battery box because what you're going to do is you're going to take the excess and roll it under and and push it up against the bottom side of the top so that's what I'm doing here I'm actually taking and pushed that tape under and stuck it now I'm going to look for the servo pockets and just press the material down once I find the pockets then I'm going to take an exacto blade and cut uh, a cross hair into the pocket so that the the material can be folded inside and then the servo will mount in each one of these pockets. You're going to do the left and the right and here you can see I've got those pockets done and it's ready for the servo to, to be mounted. Next I'm going to add an inch and a quarter strip of velcro up in the battery compartment. Next we're going to turn the wing over and cut out the hole the uh, launch hole and air vent for the motor. So the first thing I got to do is line up 
the exacto blade so that I'm inside the big hole that's in the bottom plate and do a rough cut of that hole and then I'll take my Dremel and finish the hole and whenever I'm done I will actually have a hole that's going to give a little more air to the motor as well as make it a launch hole. Now to use it as a launch hole you're going to take your hand and lay your middle finger just over the ridge of the hole and then place your middle finger in the hole and your the first finger and the third finger are going to go on the wood parts and if we look at it from the back side you can see that my finger is in the hole and my other two fingers are on top of the long side of that plate and from the front looking back you can see that I don't have my finger in there very far but I do have it in there far enough that I'm able to hold the wing. Lastly we're going to support the uh, inner sides with some skirts and we just tape that about three eighths of an inch and then bring it back over and push it back onto the bottom just like you see here and you're going to do both sides. Next I want to attach the control surfaces using Blendrum tape. To do this I'm going to lay the control surfaces out and add the Blendrum tape on the top side and I'm actually going to move the control surface about an eighth of an inch from the tip as well as uh, having about a thirty-second of an inch gap between the two surfaces. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape across the top. Then I'm going to be folding the control surface over the top side of the wing and then I'm going to add a second piece of tape on the underside and then I'm going to mash the tape down onto the control surface as well as onto the bottom of the wing and that gap just allows the tape to touch together which will secure the the tape also I'm marking three and five eighths of an inch from the center out uh, on each side and that's where the horn location is going to be Here's a look at the hardware for the uh, servos and the horn. Uh, there's a 062 wire. Th to mount the horn, you're going to cut a slip on the 3 and 5 eighths mark and then install the horn as shown here. Make sure the horn comes all the way through because you're going to be gluing the underside of that as well. To start with, remove the horn and fill the pocket that was created by the horn with hot glue. Also, you can put hot glue onto the tabs of the horn before you insert it into the pocket. Once you insert it into the pocket, go ahead and add more hot glue to create a pad on the back side. This ensures a good bond of the control horn to the control surface. You're going to do both sides exactly the same, creating a left and a right. And you can lay the servos out. Notice that I used the one with the extension on the right side and without the extension on the left. And here you can see you insert the servo into the pocket with a little bit of hot glue underneath and then press the servo down into the hot glue. Again, do this for both sides. And then you can hook up the linkage for both sides. Notice on the wing tips, uh, you can see the print. I put that print to the inside. So what I do is draw a line down the center. And the center of the wing tip is an inch and a half, as you can see here. Once you get both sides with a line drawn down them, then you can go ahead and mount them using hot glue. And you'll mount the wing right on the center line. So now you can support either end, in this case I use angles, to support either end to hold them vertical while the glue sets. Once the glue sets, then you're going to create a gusset. Here's before I've created the gusset uh, between the wing tip and the wing, and here's after. You can notice there's a small gusset of hot glue in the corner. Next I'm going to mount the motor mount first by pre-drilling the holes into the firewall. Also notice that the hot glue is filling 
parts of the larger holes so you want to be sure and drill those out before you mount the motor. At this point I'm going to go ahead and use some screws about a half inch long and mount the motor. Once I have the motor mounted now I'm going to go ahead and add the velcro to the speed controller and install the speed controller. You might note that the wiring here is done so that the proper rotation of the motor is achieved. Then I simply twist the wires and then install the speed controller mounting it to the pad that I had uh, put into the airplane uh, while I was building it. So you can notice here the speed controller is sitting on the pre-installed piece of Velcro. Also note that you tape after you've got the wires in, tape the trailing edge area of the wing. This keeps the wires inside the wing. Once you mount the receiver, you're going to want to tape up the other side just like I have done here. Here I want to give you a tip about air bubbles. And from time to time, depending on the temperature and where you carry your airplane, where it's stored, you may get some air bubbles. And you can see there's a couple right there. The best way to deal with those, whenever you first see them, don't press them down uh, and think that they won't come back. What you need to do is just poke a hole right in the center and then give it a, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds and the air will escape the hole and then at that time you can go ahead and press the covering down and it will not come back. That bubble will not come back in that area. So, but if you press it down, it will go away, but it will come back. So if you release the air, then the bubble won't come back. I don't really worry about them unless they're pretty big like those that I just showed you. For the most part though, here's another one. You can see it's pretty good size, about the size of the palm print or thumb print. We just poke it and let the air escape on its own and uh, then we just press it down. And again, that bubble won't come back. Uh, you may have to do this a couple of times. It's kind of like Monocoat uh, and that eventually the wrinkles go away and stay away. Here's another small one. I'm going to go ahead and take care of it. And it looks like I got one down here, so I'm going to take care of it. All I'm doing is just poking it right in the center. And then come back and press it down. I'll go back where I poked that one and press it down. And I think that's it. Looks pretty good. Uh, on setup, you want to set the uh, control horns on the servos so that they are in line parallel with the hinge line and then you're going to set the elevator so that it is slightly up just like we see there and you'll probably have a line right in the middle of your side force generator I of course have taken a pencil and erased the line here but the side force generator the line if you leave it on you'll be setting the control surface uh, the bottom edge of it to the top of the line and that will get you close. Also the same thing over here you can see this one here is straight I did it on purpose because I want you to see just how much I move that. Okay, so the first thing we do is we adjust the horn so that it is parallel with the hinge line and then we need to adjust the elevon so that it is up slightly. So it should be right in there. So let me see if I can do this and with one hand actually. Alright, let's see how we're looking here now. So if I hold it up, it should be slightly up. And it is. And that should be really good. So with that set, 5 sixteenths of an inch throw up and down and 5 sixteenths on the ailerons or elevons. The CG from the center or from the point back is eight and seven eighths but if you mount a 1800 in here you're going to move the battery all the way up front. If it's an 1800, a 2200 you're going to move it back about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. When you inch. go to mount the prop, the prop adapter that comes with the motor, the Turnigy uh, 2826 6 2200 we're using a 7.4 slow fly prop and the thing that you want to do whenever you mount the prop you don't need a pusher prop so don't buy a pusher prop but 
first thing with the adapter that comes with the motor, uh, this little washer, we discard it, we don't use it. The second thing is you put the small insert uh, into the prop, which adapts it to the hub. And then I take an X-Acto blade and run around the outer edge of the inside of the prop adapter so you can see that it slides on really well. And then whenever you put the prop on the prop adapter, you want to make sure that the text or the writing that is on the prop is toward the front of the airplane. So just like if you were putting it on a conventional airplane, you would put it on in this direction. And all we're going to do is we're going to lift it from here, bring it back, and we're going to put it on the motor this way. So what we're going to do is stand our prop adapter up. We're going to slide the prop down on it. We're going to take it and slide it on the uh, motor shaft. And just for reference, I can see from this side of the prop, it says 7-4. And uh, so therefore, I know I have the prop on correctly. At this point, I want to just give you a quick walk around with the airplane. Um, the, the airplane was glued together with Gorilla Glue and Hot Glue, the low temp, 10 watt glue gun, and the small glue sticks. Servos were mounted with the hot glue. The trailing edge was glued with the hot glue. The leading edge, the spars, were all glued with Gorilla Glue. The wing tips were glued with hot glue and then a gusset was created by running a bead of hot glue along the seam and uh, done that on both top and the bottom side. The Velcro installed for the battery. The Velcro was also installed uh, during the build for the receiver and the speed controller. The speed controller mounts up in the front the battery is a, we're using 1800 to 2200. Um, the 2200 goes back about 3 eighths of an inch from the opening, 1800 goes all the way to the front. The CG, the recommended CG is 8 and 7 eighths from the point back. Also the underside, you want to be sure and cut out the hole here for the vent for the motor as well as a launch hole. Uh, there were some pictures to show you how to, um, or how I go about holding the model. Also, on the horns, hot glue was used to install the horns, and a little pad was created on the back side um, so that the horn was securely glued to the foam. We have had zero issues with the horns using the hot glue. The motor is a 28266-2200 using a 7.4 slow fly prop. You want to make sure you put the prop on as, dim or as I showed you in the video where the numbers or the letters that are on the prop can be read standing in the front of the airplane looking back. That concludes this build. This airplane is ready for a receiver, which by the way, the receiver would mount on this side on the Velcro pad that was placed for it. Also, if you're going to be using a satellite, the satellite would go behind this piece of tape here or in this corner. Uh, make sure you orient the, the receivers if you're using a satellite and check your range. It is critical that you uh, check and make sure you have good range. Believe it or not, just shifting a satellite a quarter of a turn can make the difference. Also, one last thing, the tape on the back side here of the opening, this is done to keep the wires inside the airplane. So once the receiver is mounted, this corner here will be taped along with a piece of uh, two inch tape on the back side, same as what was done here on this side.